y'all think about that? That was awesome. 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 Yeah, yeah. Pretty fun moment. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody's going to be on Glow Trotting with Trey. All right. Oh, really? Yeah. What's happening, Trey? So, so why, why do you love Elvis? He's the man. He's the king. He's the king. He's the king. Friends, we thank all of y'all for coming. How many people are excited about this? <laughs> this is something new in Elvis world. And we're really excited. And we thank y'all for supporting us. Effort. And this is for the fans, by the fans, which is nothing wrong with what other people are doing, but we want to make it friendly, kind of try to get back to the way it used to be. And uh, how many people want to get back to how it used to be? Well, we're all friends and we're hanging out, you know, for one common effort. And uh, Billy, did you want to talk to him? Uh, I am sad, but I will want to say one thing. We came up with a new uh, motto. Called EFM. Elvis Lands Matter. Yeah. So we're going to come up with a few signs. That's a fact. Elvis fans do matter. That, that's a fact. Thank you so much, Billy. And friends, we have uh, Billy Smith and Joe Smith. They'll be inside. So for everybody, you know, coming to the ribbon cutting, it, it didn't cost you anything. But if you want to go in, we're going to show you the museum. Uh, you can meet and greet with Billy and Joe. You can get photos made. You can do all that kind of stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to show you all something. I came downstairs and I realized something. The champ is in the house and he has the belt. Dakota, let me see your belt. Show, show your belt off. Let's get in the light over here for a second. Oh, that's badass right there. Now. Yes, sir. Now, you're fighting your next match win? Uh, as of right now, I'm retired. I'm taking care of my kids. You I thought know? you were retired. Yep. I'm taking a little time off, but uh, one day, one day I'll be back. You go return. You return to the octagon. Return to reclaim whoever's holding this bad boy. Uh, then and I'm hoping it's Hunter Hamilton. But you have some news, though. Are you are you gonna put this on display this weekend? I am. It's gonna be up here permanently. Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum. You can come and see the Dreams Belt right here on display with all kind of cool Mr. Tiger items all around it. Yes, sir. I always assumed it was hard as a rock. What do you think, man? Man, you it's super more. soft. Did you ever think you'd sit in this kind of chair? No, this is awesome. Thanks, Paul Guy. Thanks, Patrick. It's awesome. Thanks, Thanks Trey. Man, this is cool. How do you like it? I love it. Can I stay here about 15 minutes? You can stay as long as you want. <laughs> but you can always come back, too. So. Yeah, that's cool. This actual oh, Yeah. Same thing. We went to Baltimore, Maryland and found it. We had to go we had to go all the way to Baltimore to pick it up. It was in a uh, it was in a um, um, storage unit. Really? It's the same year, same year, same people that made Elvis. It's the same exact. Thank you so much. Spy guy tracked it down. He's, he's an investigator, right? He did. He built all this. Well, I think it's soft. I'm not catching COVID just for Oh, man. <laughs> We're glad to have y'all. What y'all think about that? Is that cool? Oh, yes. Yes. That's the real thing. If you went over to Graceland and sat on the couch, it's going to feel just like that. Yeah. Now, we know that we want to protect the one at Graceland, right? Because we want to be able to see it in the future. This is for a fan so we can all enjoy and, and experience it and know what it felt like. Right? Does anybody want to talk to Elvis? Yeah, she's going to take a picture. So that stereo, and make sure everybody gets a chance to sit to sit on the furniture. The stereo down here, uh, next time you go to Graceland, you will see this exact model, this exact stereo. Same year model, same stereo, same everything. And if they popped Elvis on 8-track in here, it would sound. You've been halfway to Graceland back again. He sent this photo, he sold it for $100,000 in 1977. <clears throat> at, the, <clears throat> at the time, 
we thought it was the only photo. Okay? So that was made into a poster. I bought this poster in 1977 when I was 13 years old. And I had no idea I'd ever actually see the ambulance. Now something I want to point out to you that's interesting is, and that's another photo of it from another person that we found in less than a year ago. So if you see the bumpers bent right there, you see the pucker there. Now look at that photo. You can visibly see the bumpers bent and right here. You can visibly... What do you think? That's good. Are you having it. a fun time? Oh yes. Anything Elvis, I just love. Would you recommend Elvis fans to come check us out? I sure do. All the way. I appreciate it. I that. came from San Diego, so. Oh, she came a long way, Smart Guys. That is a long way. <laughs> hey, I'm right. glad you made the trip. Yeah, Thank you so much. House. Let's go see Billy and Joe. So Smith. Billy and Joe are in here, and they'll they'll uh, guide you to where you need to go and all that. It's so great to see y'all. So, did y'all enjoy it? Yes, sir. Is it good? Take He's gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah, he's firing with the king. All right, super, thank you. All right, so y'all just heard the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum. What did, you, what did you think about it? It was awesome. Awesome. Joey did an excellent job. To get to tour something with the actual family members, uh, something, it's, it's mind-blowing. you got to go experience it for yourself. It's an awesome museum. Yes. Do you recommend well, this to other fans? Yes. Absolutely, yes. yes. I appreciate Good job. it. All right. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you have a very interesting story that you tell me. First, tell us who you are and tell us your Elvis stories. Okay. My name is Mary Sheffield. And um, I guess I was a gate girl around 1970. And I, me and two other girlfriends of mine, we would go to the Elvis' house and wait in our car until he came out. It was like one o'clock in the morning and we would follow him to the Memphian. And the first time we did it, I just got behind him and followed him. I was in a little old beat up Volkswagen and he realized we were following. So at red lights, my car wouldn't go very fast. At red lights, he would slow down so we could catch up with him. And we got to the Memphian and we got out of the car and I went, I said, Elvis, do you mind if I take some picture? And he said, sure. Yes, sir. So, um, Priscilla, just, she kind of went over by the door to go in, but she just stood there and, and he let us take pictures and I took a bunch of pictures and I found out he would go every night. So we went every night to the Memphis and we'd follow him. And some, I got a phone number, his house num phone number from a friend that I met. And so we would call before we went just to make sure he was going, but he always went. So, <laughs> And um, then we would just wait and he'd let us in the back door. Most of the fans would go in, in the front door, <laughs> but we didn't even know that. We just went to the back and he let us in. So. It was fun, and um, the first time we went, Elvis was sitting in the front row with Priscilla, and we just went in and sat down right behind him, and one of the bodyguards came on and said, y'all can't sit right behind Elvis, nobody sits behind him, and Elvis turned around and says, oh, it's fine, they sat there. I don't care, I don't think they're going to stab me in the back or anything. Yeah. So we was sat there, and he had his arm on the back of the seat, you know, with Priscilla, and then every now and then he'd turn around and wink at us to give us a big thrill, and I couldn't tell you a movie, one, that I saw <laughs> after going for 14 nights, I saw a lot of movies, sometimes he would turn them off in the middle of the movie and put another one on. Really? <laughs> and uh, sometimes when we get to the theater, him and the boys um, would throw a football around, and they, you know, they play around, have fun. And one day I got, he had a cigar and he put it out in the ashtray and I got it out. <laughs> oh, he got, oh, he got it. Oh, you got a cigar. So I got you a, have cigar. a cigar. Part of a cigar. Part of, part of <laughs> but he was so nice to us when he, uh, we brought a friend and asked if he could, um, he, want, he was from Maryland that we had met, and he wanted to take pictures of Elvis, and he had a 
out, uh, album that Elvis had just got, okay. and El Elvis signed it for him. And, and you have those pictures. I do. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, it was it was fun. It was a great time, and he was the nicest person. I mean, he 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 let us in every time. He you know nobody, even though he didn't know who we were, but he it was just. Well, he had to recognize you. Oh yeah, he, I guess he recognizes it going every night, but it was just, it was just, gave us a thrill, so. Well, let me ask you this, did y'all have like a system going? Like how, how did you know when Elvis was leaving the house? Okay, I got his phone number <laughs> from a, a girl that her, her mother was like a secretary or something, I don't know, she worked there, and she gave me the phone number, so I would just call and some man would always answer the phone and I would say, uh, is there what's going to the movie tonight? And he would say, uh, whoever answered the phone would say, yes, he's going. I mean, he went every night, so. Um, but anyway, it that's, was just, that was my Elvis story. <laughs> that's how, how y'all figured it out. Yeah. Got a little inside connection. Right. I love it. Well, that's great. Thank you for sharing this with us. Well, you're welcome. I mean, you know, there's many, many fans out there going to watch this, many ladies. <laughs> They're probably going to be jealous of you. Oh, well. But you got to really experience and hang out at the movie yeah. theater with all this. And he was so nice to stay out in the, behind the theater and let us take pictures. That's how I got a lot of pictures from that. So. He was a nice guy, wasn't he? He was really nice. He'd turn around and wink at us, and that was, that, I mean, that gave us a thrill. <laughs> it was so fun. Well, thank you for sharing this. Sure. All right, Rachel, so you just cheered the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum. What did you think of it? I thought it was amazing. Um, it's a must-see if you come to Memphis. And I came all the way from Boston, Massachusetts. This is my first Elvis week, and I couldn't imagine not coming here. It's an it's amazing experience. Um, so cool to see where Elvis did karate and spots where he actually stood on the floor. Um, it's great. I highly recommend it. And today you met Billy and Joe Smith? I did. I did, which was great. Great. Um, to meet someone, you know, people who are so close to Elvis. Um, it, it was really wonderful. <laughs> have, um, when you feel yeah. a little bit of muscle tension right here, mm -hmm. you're kind of, and it's kind of springy. Right? All right. Here, okay, make a fist again. Okay. Okay, this time, let's just kind of. Push it out, both of them out, this way, okay? Both out, okay, right here, what I want you to do is, again, uh, let's just push your chest back, okay? Okay, before we do that, just kind of, let's just kind of, you see my chest? You don't want to be like this, okay? It has to be, you straighten your back, your chest out, okay? And then, relax your shoulder, okay? Well, let's just kind of do this for right now. Let's just kind of, just kind of roll your shoulders around, okay? Relax your shoulder, because you don't want to be like, Tense when you're doing it. You want to be very relaxed. Okay? Alright. So, right here, okay, your, your shoulders are relaxed. Okay? And then, chest back. So, let's just kind of push this fist out. Okay, now, I told you about the, uh, the, the two front numbers. Okay? You got it? Let's just kind of push it to the middle right here. Good, good, good. Okay. Right here, so we're going to take right hand back. Okay? Twist it. See how that, this thing twists? Right here. And then straight back. This way. Right here. Like, if you had a, like, I have a belt right here. Right in my belt. Like this. You got that? Okay, right on my belt. Well, you have it. Right here. Very good, very good. Okay, so, but we're not punching it. Four. Okay. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 
I know it's hard. Yeah. Do you want to just yeah. 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 Y
health wise at this point, did you notice anything? Or did you think of anything? Or well, like, the, the, even there in June, was in, in June, that's what I was talking about. He had been home for a while. It had the concerts that had been rescheduled from when he was in the hospital earlier, and he he had not been out at all since he came back from that last tour, and then. It was like that night he was just ready to play because the first time he came out was the motorcycles and driving around town. He came out later that night, about an hour after he got, he came, they all came back out again and he went down and got on I-55 and went south down into Mississippi just flying like he was just blowing it out, you yeah. know, and we followed him. And then he got off on 51 and drove all the way back into Graceland on 51. And he would, again, he would stop at red lights and he was, and everybody was going, he never does this. What's he? And then one time he stopped and then we got to, just got up past that and there was a cop sitting on the side of the road, you know. Wow. And then he went back into Graceland. That time we didn't even get out of the car. We just waited because one of the girls said, he's not through. He's having fun. Yeah. And about an hour later, they came out on the three-wheelers, went down to Southbrook Mall, and they played chicken in the parking lot. And we just sat, and he'd drive straight for us, but I didn't take a picture, because I was so afraid to so, use so a where flash. where in the parking lot was that? Was it in the front, the side? In the front, like in the, the front. Like along the, the highway, yeah. Yeah. And he played there at first. He played, and, and he, jumped a, he, he jumped one of the, you know, concrete things, and messed his car up, and so then he, he went back to Graceland. Then they rode around in the front yard at Graceland for so a while. he actually did jump one of those? Oh, yeah. Would you remember which one it was if you were out oh, there? Oh, no. No. Uh, no. Was I front? wasn't looking at I, I, I was just watching. But it's in the front. Yeah. It, as far as I can remember, yes, it was in the front, because we, we just parked and stayed still, and he would drive straight at us, and then... And then turn, you know, but yes, yes, I didn't dare try to take a picture, you that's know. That's it. <laughs> August the 9th. What a story. August the 9th, but then the morning of the going tent. into the morning of the 10th. Okay. Yeah. That's his time he will. Oh, morning, yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> I appreciate you for sharing this. Well, no problem. Thank you. All right, so I want you to introduce yourself to my audience, and you just tell me a pretty fascinating story that you have at the Crosstown Theater. Right. Okay, my name's Ron lived in Memphis all my life. I'm uh, in my 70s and uh, I go back away. And uh, the story I'm gonna get with on here is, uh, it's a ways back, it was uh, 1956. I would have been eight years old and I got drugged to a movie with my parents. Uh, I'm thinking it was probably on a weekend, probably on a uh, Friday or Saturday night and it was over at the Crosstown Theater which is now it's still the building is still there as a matter of fact if you've seen the videos on the karate place that where you went up the stairs this theater is right below that well actually that I take let me take that back there was a uh, right below the karate studio was a pharmacy it was called White Way Pharmacy and uh, that was the soda fountain of the pharmacy below the karate. But right next door to the pharmacy was the Crosstown Theater. And the big build building you'll still see over there was the old Sears and Roebuck. That's the neighborhood. And I grew up right close to there. And anyway, uh, on this particular night uh, that I got drugged to the movie, the movie that was playing was uh, Around the World in 80 Days. And uh, for you people that have seen it, it's a rather long movie, and uh, they had an intermission on you know, movies back then that were long, where people could get up, go to the restroom, have a smoke, get popcorn, whatever. And during the intermission, they would turn the lights on. Well, we were up in the balcony because it was a popular movie, and I guess downstairs was sold out because we wouldn't have been up there unless we had to be. We were up in the balcony, and the uh, intermission comes on, lights come on, and something unusual happened. Back in that period of time at the movie theaters, well, they had ushers. 
and ushers, these little guys would dress up in a uniform, they had flashlights and they would help you to your seat, the uniform guy. Well, during this intermission, when the lights came on, there was an usher standing at the end of our row, right next to my daddy. My daddy sat here, my mama was in the middle, and I was on this side of my mama. And there was an usher standing right here. And there was an usher standing at the other end of the row. Well, my mama was getting curious. My daddy was kind of laid back. He didn't, nothing bothered my daddy. But my mama was getting kind of curious and she, you know, she started doing this and looking around, what's going on? And all of a sudden she kind of lit up. She goes to my daddy, she goes, you know who that is down there? And my daddy goes, you know, he looks around there. He's a pretty laid back man. He goes, and he got kind of excited. And I'm eight years old sitting right here. And she goes, that's Elvis. Now this is 56 and Elvis was just starting to kind of get well known. I guess he had been on, El I think he'd been on Ed Sullivan. Uh, and uh, maybe Steve Allen, some of those other little shows, but I think he had done the first movie. But, you know, he was starting to, he was starting his rise. Yeah, that was his big year. Right. Okay. So, she said Elvis, you know. And it was Elvis, and he was at the end of that, of our row, but we were in the balcony, and those rows probably didn't have nine, ten seats in them. Yeah. So my dad, my mom and me, and there was three or four empty seats here on my, on my side. Then there was Elvis's date, and Elvis was on the end, and that usher. Well, my mama says, she says, that's Anita Wood. Everything I've read and heard is that Elvis didn't start dating Anita until 57. So. You know, I can't swear that it was Anita, but my mom, she kept up on this type thing. She was a big Elvis fan, and she says it was Anita, but nonetheless, whoever it was, she was a good-looking woman. Yeah, you remember that as I remember that guy. part really good, even though I was eight years old. Yeah, we don't forget pretty women. That's right. And uh, anyway, so my mom, she was kind of, uh, she didn't care what people thought, you know. She was uh, opposite of my dad. Well, my mom's giving it this, you know, this old stretching around. And I was embarrassed, to be honest with you. You know, I said, cut it out. I said, She's giving it this. Well, a few minutes went by, and slowly but surely, you'd see people's heads starting to turn around, because they saw the ushers, too. Yeah. And then you saw them going. But nobody, nobody got up out of their seat and came up to him and bothered him. But by the time other people were noticing, the lights dimmed back down and intermission was over. Now, as far as who was with Elvis, from what I remember, there were only two guys sitting behind them. It was Elvis and his date, and like I say, these empty seats. But I remember seeing two guys behind him, and then the lights come back down and the movie starts. Well, when the movie was over, and I was glad it was over, because I was eight years old, and that was a long movie. But Elvis was gone. Elvis had left the building when the movie was over. There we are. Oh my goodness, there it is. That looks great. What do you think? Right? It does, man. Really, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. And that looks really great. Wait till you see the inside. Hmm. I'm good, aren't I? Huh? I'm pretty quick with the camera. You never know where I'll yeah. be. Yeah, you are. You're yes, slick. Sir. Well, welcome to the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum, Mr. Hebler. This is great. Yeah. This looks really, really good. They put a lot of work into it. Yeah, I can tell. That is really 
great. Good, good, good. Good stuff. I'm Daniel. I'm healing Joyce Green over there. Nice to meet you. Hey, Alyssa, shut up. <laughs> How you doing? How are you guys doing? How are you doing? I guess we can just go on in. Let's go on in. Hey, you know, you know the owner? Huh? You know the owner? Come on in. I'll go in this way. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? Look at that wall. See that? Yeah. You notice that man right there pushing red? Who's that man pushing red? You know him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know who, who that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me and him. Right here? Yeah. yeah. That's a great picture of you That's and Elvis right there. Yeah. yeah, you know, he actually did the move wrong. Okay. All right. And then figured it out right away. He was doing it the wrong way. He was going to, you know, so he corrected it. But they took the picture before he corrected it. Before he corrected it? Yeah. <laughs> so forever. It's captured at that moment. Huh? Yeah. That, that moment's captured forever. That's right. Oh, look. I got you. Cool. Very, very nice. You remember this? Yeah. Well, it's all different <laughs> to me. Hey, there's that picture you were talking about. We got it on the wall. Oh, yeah, with the toe. Yeah, we made yeah. it look like it's a continuance of the building. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go park. Yes, sir. Thank you. I yeah, I remember okay. that. He also gave me, he had one of them uh, big old belts made for himself. He had one made for me, too. Really? Yeah. And I wore it into the place, and then I kind of lost it. Yeah. Somewhere around yeah. what happened to yeah. it. That'd be a cool piece. I'm Billy. Billy? Billy the spa guy. Yes, sir. I was in the Air Force. You remember me and you talked about me having a motorcycle wreck, and we had a similar. Oh, yeah. Similar, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Billy. So I'll be emceeing tonight so all right. with you, so I'll introduce you and all that kind of right. cool stuff. So you're We're excited for you to be here, my Hopefully friend. you won't let me embarrass myself. I will not. All right. No, you embarrass yourself if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> We're just glad to have you. Oh, yes, I'm sir. delighted to yes, be sir. here. It's great. Yes, sir. So I think Payne Reeves trying to convince everybody that Elvis didn't hurt himself doing karate. Yeah, there he is right there. Yeah. So he's pulling the sock off. Yeah, that was funny. And there you are. You're up on your knees. And where you're at is where that post is at right there. You're just this side of that post. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I'll show them a little bit of that and say that guy right there is this guy right here. Does that sound good? Yeah, sound good. That's yes, a great sir. way to introduce him. It'd be interesting to all to get the perspective of what it was like to be on the receiving end of all of that generosity. So I'm going to tell you about that. Now Elvis gave away houses, furniture, Cars, trucks, motorcycles, go-karts, jewelry, money, clothing, memorabilia, and he always did it with a good heart. He never expected anything in return. Here we are one day, driving around Memphis, I don't remember who was driving the car, but Ellis was in the front seat, and I was behind the driver in the back seat. And we're just driving around, enjoying each other's company, telling jokes, laughing, talking about girls. <laughs> yeah, guys talk about girls. <laughs> yeah, don't we? Anyhow, all of a sudden, Ellis says, uh, hey, Dick, I don't buy you a car. I said, I asked myself, I said, you don't have to do that. I know I don't have to do that, but I want to buy you a car. I said, Elvis, you just gave me a Mercedes a year and a half ago. You don't have to give me another car. I know I gave you a Mercedes a year and a half ago, but I want to buy you a car. I said, well, that's nice, but you don't have to. 
thing I know, Elvis had turned around in the seat and pointed a loaded gun in my face. <laughs> a loaded gun stuck in my face. And he said, I'm going to buy you a you want, <laughs> you want to hear what he actually said? The, yes. the actual words? Yes, yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you offended by bad language? No. All right, buckle up. <laughs> this is what Elvis actually said. He said, you're going to take this car or I'm going to blow your head off. I drove it for 20 years. I put a quarter million miles on it. That car today is sitting in Grayson. It's the purple Lincoln. Yeah. And I have all kind of stories about that car. Oh, man, all kinds. But the question was, what was Elvis Presley the person really like? So here we are about a couple of months later, and uh, we're sitting in Elvis in his bedroom, sitting on his bed. Don't get any weird ideas, okay? <laughs> and uh, doing the same thing we always did, just talking trash, telling jokes, laughing and joking, talking about girls. <laughs> and I said, hey Elvis, you got any idea of how many vehicles you have bought and given away in the last couple of years? He said, no. No, I don't care either. He said, hang on, I want to show you something. So he goes away to his office. He comes back in, he hands me a check. Made out to him in the amount of $100,000. Back then, can you imagine how much? One of a series of checks, many before and many to come. Okay. He said, you know, I'm not stupid. I understand that I couldn't possibly pay money to get the kind of publicity and PR that I get every time I buy somebody a car. He says, secondly, it seems like every time I buy somebody a car, the money I spend for that, it comes back to me ten times over, like that check you're holding. And lastly, it makes me feel good to make people happy. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis Presley, the person. <laughs> 